What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is May 27th, 2018. It is Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. Markets and banks um, in the U.S. will be closed on Monday. That is in recognition of Memorial Day, a national holiday here in the U.S. Um, there will be slower market movement all across the FX markets on Monday as a lot of liquidity in the U.S. markets will be closed due to the holiday, banks not closing, trading, all that stuff. Um, anybody new to these videos, my name is Corey Smith. I am the founder of CoreFX Professional Trader. Um, I do these videos every week to go over the week ahead in the Forex markets. I touch on a little bit of everything, but I mainly dive into the charts. I go a full breakdown of the U.S. dollar crosses as well as everything on my watch list for the week ahead. I focus on strong trending pairs, looking for pullbacks and breakouts within the trend in the condition continuation trend phase to try to get in on trends and uh, catch the ride of the wave in the direction of the trend. Um, anybody who's returning viewer, thank you very much. I appreciate the support and staying tuned in these videos. I hope you guys are finding some value in them. I hope there's something you get out of watching them. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, like the videos, throw a comment, share any of your feedback. Tell me something you want me to cover to do better that I do good. Whatever you want to do, I enjoy the feedback. That is how I can mold this content to be what you guys want to be. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Check out some of the other content on my page. All kinds of free Forex um, information. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts here. Again, thank you guys. I appreciate tuning in. I'll catch you on the inside. All right, so diving into these charts here. I'm doing it a little differently this week. I am going to go over and cover real quick the indexes for all the major currencies. The dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound, the Swiss franc. The Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, and the New Zealand dollar. Um, just some interesting stuff setting up in the charts and just wanted to show you guys a little bit of a different look at these markets and these indexes to give you guys a look at what drives the individual currencies rather than the pairs. So this US dollar pair, as you guys know, we violated the downtrend. We broke upwards and we've been on a nice bullish rip ever since. We broke right through the 94 resistance level, psychological resistance, strong level this past week. And we now close with a strong bullish breaking candle. The next target I see in the immediate future is the 95 level. We have NFP coming up this week, non-farm payrolls, job employment reports out of the U.S. the first Friday of every month. Um, this June's the new month here on Friday's June 1st, so we have the NFP numbers for that um, release on Friday. That should be the biggest influencer of the dollar this week. I do think we're due for a little correction. Maybe we push up to 95 and then we get a correction. As you can see, the moving averages are very extended. There's basically straight up the 20 50 is really strong 200s flattened out looks like it's gonna start curving up now one significant factor I will be watching on this pair is when the 50 crosses the 200 SMA this is the golden cross the death cross is when it crosses under it crosses above it is the golden cross we haven't seen that happen since all the way back here in 2016 back in October we had the golden cross and the dollar ripped higher for a series of months then we had the death cross and the dollar ripped lower and we haven't seen that cross happen again since then so that will be a significant occurrence when we see this um, crossover of the 50 and the 200 SMA that's something I'll be watching for not too much conviction in the direction of the dollar this week bullish trend now I don't want to sell against the bullish trend but I do think we have some correction coming so we'll keep an eye on that euro on the other hand I do have a little bit more conviction about as you can see with this black line I've drawn here this is the strong rip the euro is made to the downside just as the dollar has been the euro has been moving in the opposite direction as they're inversely related as you guys can see right on this um, about 111.50 area this is where there was a strong demand zone strong support level here in the past price has come down to that now with very little correct correction along the way we had a few day correction a couple weeks ago but it's been ripping hard moving averages are pretty extended as you can see here we're coming up on the death cross with this pair which we haven't seen in a long time back here we saw again in october 2016 inversely related to the dollar same story um but we're now on this support level. I do think we'll see a bullish bounce from the euro this week. I think we'll see some temporary strength come back to the pair. I think uh, technically we're a little extended and need some correction. But all in all, I do see this pair bearish in the medium to long term for sure. I just think in the shorter term, we're at an area here of support where price is likely to now bounce at least temporarily. Yen, another one I have a little more conviction about. I do think we're going to be moving to the downside on the yen. We are in this long trading range of about a year. Broke out, failed to continue the breakout with follow through, reversed back into it. And we're now in about the middle of the range, but we're in a downtrend now, setting lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high. 
I do think price is now ready to move lower again, and I'm backing that with fundamental analysis as well, as the North Korean summit was in question of being called off last week, and then we saw a little bit of a risk off move. The yen gained some strength, as you can see with these rips higher, but over the weekend we have had um, some verbiage from Donald Trump saying that the meeting is still set to take place, and I believe it's Singapore on June 12th, so that should bring the markets a little bit more uh, that risk on feel, which could give us some weakness in the yen, technically and fundamentally. I'm seeing a weaker yen for this week. Pound, not too much conviction. We're in a nice downtrend now. We violated the uptrend, broke under the 200 SMA, sitting lower highs and lower lows. But we are at a strong support level here at this 129. If I throw a little daily support zone on it, you can see what I'm talking about right there. 129 level. We could see a bounce. Maybe we get back up to 130, 130. 31 13050 area to get in a short to enter this to the downside um, but all in all we are definitely bearish on the pound however we need to wait maybe to get in a little better price wait for it to bounce a little bit before we really sell into that cad not too much conviction here either we've had a real choppy chart as you guys know i've been saying this is a pretty ugly chart for a while now you can see we broke below this strong support last week or two weeks ago Price immediately reversed. We did it again Friday to end this week, so price could now continue to the downside. This is structure that we need to break before we can be convicted of it moving lower, and it's now testing that structure and at the bottom of that structure. So we could see this CAD fall off now. Um, a lot of room to the downside if we break below this area, 75, 50 or so. There's a lot of room for CAD to fall off, so this is something we definitely want to be watching. Swiss francs, another one I have some strong conviction about. I do believe this is ready to make a move to the downside again. We've been in this very strong downtrend. We set this dramatic lower low all the way down here, breaking through all these levels, no, no hesitation. We have rallied back up now, set a lower high. We got a nice shooting star candle here on this overhead support. I mean, uh, support turn resistance right here around the 95 level. So we broke through it. We've now rallied back up to it. I do believe... We're now set to continue this leg lower and we should see a nice uh, sell off out of the Swiss franc this week. Again, another thing supporting that is the risk on move that I think we're going to be seeing in the markets this week as I believe equities are going to rally. <clears throat> Australian dollar, as you guys can see, this is another one I have some conviction on to the downside. We've been in a nice downtrend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We've been in a lower high now, a little bit of choppy price action here, but price is definitely ready to make a move to the downside. If we take the last leg of this lower high down to the lower low, throw a Fibonacci on it, you can see we're right at around the 382 to 50 level. This is a golden trend continuation retracement level, a level that I really like to see price come up to. So we have hit that level, made this lower high, and I believe we're ready now to push to the downside again to this uh, lower low, at least to retest 74.50, but potentially even continue setting new lower lows. Um, new Zealand dollar. I just wanted to copy and paste it here for you guys onto a PowerPoint slide so I can zoom in a little better. There's no actual chart on TradingView for the New Zealand dollar index futures. Um, but if you go on Finviz website, you can find it. So here we got a weekly chart. As you guys can see, price has been range bound over a long period of time all through 2017 and 18. We're at the bottom of this range once again. And as you can see, each time we've hit it, we've bounced. But it is the third plus time to the bottom of this range. We are in a strong downtrend, as you can see. Some of these other moves down to it were a little bit choppier, a little bit choppier. This one has been a strong convicted downtrend. So what I think we might see is a little bit of a bounce, and then we possibly could break this support. Taking it to the daily, you can see a little better. Strong bearish momentum candles riding this all the way down. We're now at this bottom. If we see some sort of inverse head and shoulders or double bottom clear pattern or something setting up showing that this support is likely to be rejected, that'll change our analysis. But at this point, we're in a nice downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high. We'll see if we can make a lower low or if we rally a little bit, maybe up to 170 and then we push to the downside and then potentially we can break through this support and push into new territory to the downside. All right, so that covers the um, index pairs for us. Hopping now into the U.S. dollar crosses, we starting with the euro dollar. As you guys know, we were we have been in a nice downtrend now. Price has just been falling off, similar to that euro index chart. We are coming down to a very strong support here at around 150 to 160 level. Um, as you can see in the past, this has created a nice demand zone, nice support and resistance level, and uh, price is falling pretty hard. Still seeing these strong bearish candle closures like we saw Friday. 
So we could see price trickle down a little lower, maybe pop off this demand zone, rally back up to around 117, 118 range, and that's where I'll be looking for more shorts to enter this trend to the downside. Um, don't want to chase this, catching a falling knife, chasing this downtrend once it's already running away. What we want to do is wait for it to rally, get us into a better area to get in that wholesale pricing, better risk to reward, nice target potential, and then get in short. So that's what we're looking for here on the euro dollar. Pound dollar, another pretty similar story. We violated the uptrend. We came up here, tried to push above this 143 level, failed, sold off hard, 20 cross below the 50, both sloping downwards, trading below the 200 SMA now. We were consolidating on the 200 SMA a couple weeks ago. I told you guys we were looking for a break to the downside. That's what we got. We're now hitting a weekly support level at around 133. Did have a strong bearish close on Friday, but I do think we'll see a little bit of a bounce here. Um, again, same story as the euro. I'm looking for a bounce, looking for price to rally up to a better price, and then look for shorts around 135 level up here to then get into, join the downtrend just at a better price, better risk to reward, target stop, and everything. Dollar CAD, starting to see some bullishness, starting to break above these resistance levels. We've got a multiple number of resistance levels here um, that price has been trying to break, starting with 129 up to around the 130 level. There's all kinds of resistance here that price is trying to break. As you can see, we've been failing to break out of this area for a few weeks here, um, really all through the month of May. Coming up to a strong level now, if you look left, it's a strong zone. It's also a weekly trend line we're coming up to with this blue line. So this is really going to be this, the breaker, um, the make or break here for the CAD. If we do break above this, then this will be a pair that I'll be looking to trade for the first time in a while. I'll be looking for a move something like this. Get in around here. As we have a new uh, clearer trend, the beginning of trends is usually the best place to get in because it's the strongest moves. So I'll be looking for right around here, price to break above this, pull back, retest, and then get long. Um, if it fails to break it again, then I'm putting this uh, pair on the back burner and just letting it wait until I see something better set up. Moving on to dollar yen. Dollar yen's a little bit of a um, tricky one too. We are in an uptrend though, and we had a strong sell-off this past week as that risk-off move occurred from Trump notifying um, media that he was calling off the, the meeting with North Korea. That sent a little bit of a risk aversion um, into the markets. Money started flooding to the yen, leaving the other things, and that's what we saw this multiple pullback. But I do think that's going to fade quickly, especially with this new developing story that Trump's saying the deal, the meeting is still on, was never called off. <clears throat> As you can see on this chart here, this is pulling back to a very significant level. Right around here, the 109 area, you can see price respected it once before. This is our higher high, higher low, higher high, retesting the higher low, so structure still holding. We still have nice um, placement of the moving averages here, 20s above the 50. We're moving upwards, still in an uptrend. So now we zoom it in, and we're going to be looking on these lower time frames for an entry long. As you can see here, we got a great risk to reward setup. If you enter a trade down here, you can have your stop below this structure target back up at the prior high and you got a two and a half risk to reward ratio right there off of a setup like this so these are the kind of things we want to look for these are the kind of plays we want to take and setups we want to watch for now this is buying into some strong momentum selling off here so we'd have to wait and see find a support let this structure show that it's holding and then show us that it's going to bounce and then we can look to join it there but definitely some uh decent price action in the dollar yeah nothing too wonderful but it's it's better than we've been seeing lately um, Swiss franc dollar, this is one that I told you guys when we reached this parity level up here to watch for a reversal. Price on the lower time frame was showing us this rounding top pattern, inverse cup and shoulders, anything you want to call it. Um, we did form this rounding top last week and price has um, started to sell off. We've got this golden cross though, the 50 has come and crossed above the 200. We are still in an uptrend. We're coming back now to this strong demand level. So. Although we did get this reversal and bounce off this resistance, as we were expecting, it is in a strong uptrend. We have a lot of bullish presence in this market. We have sold off, but I think the buyers are going to return shortly to this pair. Um, I'd be watching for things such as counter trend line breaks. Um, maybe on the four hour daily chart, you look for reversal patterns off of zones such as this. Look for price to bounce and show us that the bulls are returning to the market. Some kind of confirmation you need in your trading plan to show you that uh, pullback is likely coming to an end and you wanna be looking for getting back in on a pair long. Aussie dollar, 
So as you guys can see here, we've been in a nice downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Respecting this downward daily trend line, we broke this upward weekly trend line a few weeks ago here. And you can see we set lower lows, we rallied, we had a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders setting up here, but price pushed up, hit this 50 SMA, we got a shooting star, then some consolidation, and Friday closed with this very strong bearish engulfing candle here, pushing us to the downside. Now we do have a strong level here at the 75.50 zone still. Um, so we, we do have to be hesitant, and if you drop it down to the four hour, you can see this counter trend line is a nice... Uh, level for us to keep an eye on this 200 SMA is acting as resistance from the upside and we have this counter trend line here on the four hour to the downside so looking for a break of that could be some nice confirmation for us to go short New Zealand dollar US dollar similar story we've got this death cross occurring as we speak we're in a strong downtrend with this move lower price has rallied up to this strong structure support and resistance level we had a shooting star candle off it and a little bit of consolidation afterwards not the best risk to reward with this trade but um another same same idea you know you've got this counter trend line here that price is um respecting in this rally and we do see some potential move to the downside if there's anywhere as price is going in my opinion with this pair i would think it would be moving to the downside back down to around the 68 level and we'll see if that range can be broken on the new zealand dollar chart like we've been talking about on the index that is a direct correlation to this chart here and that would show this range that we've been in here breaking to the downside and that's where we could expect some very strong moves price comes back down and breaks below the 68 level expect a very strong sell-off a lot of people will be waiting for that in anticipation and jumping on to catch that wave to the downside if it does occur all right so that covers the u.s dollar crosses now i'm going to quickly hop into my weekly watch list to start the week my watch list is always dynamically changing depending on what's going on what pairs are trending what pairs are in the right setup so this is what i'll be watching to start this week We've got the euro yen. I really like this pair. We've been in this downward trend channel now, setting lower lows and lower highs. We're at this strong support around 129. Price broke out this past week. As you can see with these four in a row bull, uh, bearish candles, some strong momentum candles. Price is now coming down. We do have some potential room to the downside still, as you see looking left. We do have some uh, space on this chart where there's nothing really to stop price. So we could see this continue to the downside. But if we bounce around the 26 or so, a pullback is what we'll be looking for. So essentially what we'll be looking for in this pair is for price to rally. We want to find a little bit of support here, price to rally. Again, the same premise of we don't want to be chasing a trend. We don't want to try to just jump in because we see price falling. A lot of times our emotions will take over and we will um, make acts like that, take actions like that. Um, but we want to really stay disciplined, stay on our trading plan, and our plan tells us we want to wait for price to rally back up, come back up to a better price, retest this level ideally, and then look for shorts to the downside to continue that next push lower. So Euro Yen is a beautiful level we just broke. It's in a nice trend. Moving to the downside, I like um, the Euro weakness. This week, I do see some weakness in the Yen. So... Uh, that could, re that could give us this bounce. The euro, as you guys saw on the index chart, I think it's due for a little bounce as well. So maybe the first couple of days this week, or maybe even this whole week, we see a little bit of a bounce in the euro. We come back up to this level. And then maybe the following week or the end of this week, we can find that short to catch us to the downside. But this is a really nice trade setup occurring. It's something I definitely want to keep an eye on. Swiss franc, Japanese yen. Uh, a little bit of a different story with this one. With this one, we actually have violated our downtrend. We have broken structure broke above the 50 SMA and the 20. We have pulled back, but we are going to be watching here because this area we've pulled back to is not only a strong level um, support resistance wise, but if we throw a fib out here, it's right on the 50 SMA. I mean a 50 Fibonacci bounce on the 20 SMA, retesting this broken downward trend line that it broke to the upside. We had a strong bullish momentum move. This is a very strong indicator that this wasn't just a bounce <clears throat> off of Support in a downtrend, this is actually trend reversal looking price action. We have a very strong few week uh, bull rally here. Price did pull back and we are in between the SMAs. The SMAs didn't fully turn around, they didn't cross yet, but this is the early stage of a trend that we are gonna be watching to see if this pair is able to find some bullish pressure and uh, come and move to the upside. If we take it down to the hourly chart, you guys can see a little better where this support is holding. Um, 
You could kind of throw a trend line in here, uh, counter trend line, but looks a little ugly. We have this triple bottom, rounding bottom, cup and handle pattern starting to form here. So definitely a pair we want to keep an eye on and see if it's able to make a bullish presence push off of this uh, trend line that we're now retesting here. Um, next pair I'll be watching is Pound Aussie. Pound Aussie is another beautiful trending pair. Uh, we broke this strong uptrend we are in. We caught this short um, with here at CoreFX. I'm sure some of you guys probably saw it on my Instagram. If you're not in CoreFX, price broke this structure, pulled back, retested here, and then sold off. That was a nice catch that we caught. Price has been ranging since then on on uh, market structure and has now broken the daily trend line. This other level of significant support resistance and had a strong sell off from there. We're now in a demand zone, created a lower low. I think we'll get a little bit of a rally here. And then the next lower high we make with this pair, we want to be looking to get in short. We want to be looking to catch the continuation of this trend and ride the next wave to the downside. With the pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, another similar story. Uh, we're on a significant level right here at around 192 so we do want to see a break of this we broke this daily upward trend line we're testing structure reversing off of these highs and now seeing the 20 cross below the 50 if we get a little bit of a break of structure here i'm going to catch a retest back to this zone this is a very nice uh, sport resistance zone if you look left and it's also created a nice demand zone that the first time price hit bounced off of this is the second time it looks like we're blowing right through the level so we want to watch this to break lower Pull back to retest and then catch it to the downside as this pound New Zealand could present as a good short opportunity uh, some point in this week if we see that happen. Another one I'm watching is EuroCAD. This is another nice strong trending pair. We've got both moving averages sloping. We're below the 200, below the 20, below the 50. 20 is below the 50. 20 is about to cross the 200. As you can see here, we uh, have been moving lower and then we did see a nice bounce off this support. We could see a more of a higher bounce. But I'd like to see price potentially come up a little higher. Maybe we test this 200 SMA weekly trend line that was broken now being retested. Taking it down a little bit, you can see um, there has been some bearish presence off of this resistance. So this trend could just continue the downside without rallying higher. But that is something we'll be keeping an eye on. Taking it to the hourly, you can see this zone a little better. That price is now double topping off of and reacting to. And we got a little bit of a counter trend line here that's being broken with a strong bearish close on Friday. But another pair that we have on our watch list here. And finally, we have the last pair I'm really watching to start this week is New Zealand CAD. Another one, beautiful trend. Moving averages are rolled over. Price is trading below them, below the 200, below the 50. 200 is, uh, the 20 is below the 50 and the 200. So we have nice moving averages. We're setting lower lows, lower highs, breaking structure. We came and set this lower low. Price has now rallied. We've come up to a nice level to continue this trend to the downside. As you guys can see, with this black counter trend line, we're going to be looking now for a bounce off this level. Potential target all the way down here at 88. Potential stop can be up here at around 90 to 90, 50 range in here. Taking it down a little bit, you can see on this uh, four hour chart, the level that we're at approaching here that we're going to be looking for a short. Again, you can use a counter trend line. You can use candlestick patterns. You can use any number of methods to uh, account for when to get into this pullback continuing to the downside at the 200 closing in here we could wait for price to see if price reacts to that but um all in all this is a great setup for a short i ideally would like to see price um sunday monday tuesday ish set some kind of daily reversal can candle pattern here that would give me a great sign that this price is now ready to move to the downside ready to uh continue this trend and ready to let the bears come back into the market as there's been enough of a pullback here to get us in at a great price to join this trend. Last thing I want to cover here is the S&P 500. This is the U.S. dollar, I mean the U.S. equity market index chart. As you guys know, markets are going to be closed on Monday of this week in honor of Memorial Day. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be open. This was in a bull pennant. As you guys know, we broke above and out of this pennant with this bullish press here. Very significant uh, technical price action we have the 20 cross above the 50 again last time that happened was a little while ago and we saw a lot of bullish pressure since then and then we had the 20 cross below it and then we had some bearish pressure and now we finally crossed back above it we broke out of this triangle pattern and now we have a nice consolidation here when we see consolidation like this that tells us that price is likely to make a strong push out of it when it breaks all right, so we've been in this consolidation for two weeks now. I think we have some grounds this week between the uh, North Korea summit being back on NFP the end of the week. 
we have some grounds for some um, bullish pressure this week. I think we break this week. We see a breakout of this consolidation. Maybe even Tuesday with the markets opening, break out of this consolidation and continue to push to the upside, which just does more to convince me that the um, risk on moves could be occurring in this mar in the markets this week. So I'll be watching for that to occur. If this lines up, I'll be looking for shorting the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. If it doesn't line up, I'll be looking for if, if it breaks out to the other side and breaks out to the bearish side, then we'll be looking for a strong yen and Swiss franc. But <clears throat> this chart is a big determiner for the risk on risk off sentiment in the markets. And it's in a significant price action mode right now. So this is definitely something we want to be watching. All right, guys, appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you're getting some content, some value out of them. I do these videos every week, so stay tuned. If you're new to this, I appreciate it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for the support. Uh, I'll keep making these videos for you guys. Leave any comments. Subscribe to the page so you're notified when new videos come out. Share any uh, feedback you have with me or if you want me to cover anything in particular that I don't cover now, be sure to throw it in a comment on there, and I will take care of that. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, enjoy the holiday weekend for everyone here in the United States. Memorial Day is a big day. A lot of men and women in our country made big sacrifices our grandfather being one of them. Um, a lot of us wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for uh, the sacrifices they've made. And, and a lot of things that are the way they are today wouldn't be. So all you Americans out there, happy Memorial Day. <clears throat> and um, thank you guys, and I'll catch you guys all next week.